Australia is known for many things, such as its amazing nature, world-renowned coffee, dangerous animals, and laid-back culture. It's also got a thriving indie video game scene thanks to a diverse and unique array of titles that often push the creative boundaries into new and exciting territories. Although there are many more we could shout out, we've highlighted 12 upcoming Aussie-made games that have us fair dinkum excited. A global effort of a game grounded on Aussie soil by local Max Cahill, Arco is a stylized, cartoony, pixel art take on the Western genre as told by a diverse and passionate collection of developers. It's promising a pretty unique looking spin on action-driven gameplay with what it is calling simultaneous turn-based combat across multiple playable characters and campaigns, all of which are united by a violent pushback on the Red Company game. The setting seems to be leaning into a fantastical Mexican landscape, a vibrant but equally harsh plateau for this tale of vengeance to play out on. It's striking just to look at, and the score is already kicking ass, so I have no doubt that Arco will make its mark. Featuring the zany and humorous tone of Time Splitters and the frenetic pace of Doom, Bears in Space from Queensland's Broadside Games is fusing retro and modern design with roaring success. After going hands-on with it at Paxos 2023, I knew that it would be on this list, reminding me of the times when video games could be just that, dumb fun. As for the premise, the player is a space astronaut who is trying to save their crew and get back to Earth, and whose DNA has been merged with Bertana, the she-bear, allowing you to channel your inner bear when consuming elusive honeypots. It's coming in 2024, and if you're not excited about what Broadside Games is cooking up, then I'm guessing you were born after 2005. Or first-person shooters just aren't your jam. Bits and Bops is a colourful and catchy rhythm game consisting of 20 different original levels. As its demo stands, you can take pictures of a seal, build furniture with a cat getting in the way of the instructions, and have conversations through birdsong. This game seems to capture the appeal of titles like Melatonin, while keeping the content light and whimsical, and throwing in some interesting mechanics to increase the difficulty. Even with pleasant animation and tunes, the strength of a game like this relies on its accuracy and responsiveness, and it seems like the team has this in the bag already. Call of the Golden Valley has already been turning heads at various game conventions, and honestly it's not hard to see why. This first-person detective adventure game places you in the shoes of an American woman who has been whisked away into Australia's high country in search of her missing friend. Developer Asura Studios has gone out of its way to make this as authentic an Aussie Outback experience as possible, using real-world sound recordings and visual reference points in its recreation of our striking backyard. With an updated take on the concept of detective work in the age of the internet, a gorgeous rendition of Australia's natural splendour, and a tone that lands somewhere between comforting and alienating, Call of the Golden Valley feels truly blue. Coming out of Little Old Darwin is the multicultural rhythm game Diets and Deities. Playing as Nefel, a cloud spirit form from Cooking Vapors, you must dance cook your way through different regional maps to restore delicious order to a world that has been corrupted by the bland fast foods of Colonel KFZ. This game offers challenging keep the beat levels to unlock recipes, actual recipes you can use IRL, from First Nations, Balinese, Brazilian and Chinese cultures, and introduces players to a cast of cool original characters in the form of deities. The central message is that cultures are strengthened through the sharing of music and food, and I'm keen to see how they've captured the feeling of what it's like to eat, dance and live somewhere like Darwin. Imagine an RPG with the cartoon aesthetic of Rugrats and Siggy Butt Brain combined with the well-designed inspirations from Earthbound and the racing mechanics of Micro Machines, all set in a 2D near-future Melbourne. That's Drift City Kings from Melbourne's Nonsense Machine, a game where you'll work your way up from a 9 to 5 life to the greatest drift racer going around. To achieve your dreams of burning rubber, you'll need to work your day job to earn the cash to spruce up your ride with new parts and paint jobs to have the best chance at completing the Drift Lords' challenges. In between work and racing, explore Drift City and do something fun on the side, such as helping the locals, hitting up the Sunday market and cafes, and getting decked out in fresh threads. Coming early in 2024, Drift City Kings is one of the year's more quirky titles to have on your list. Far too often, sports games forget about the good old arcade days, where they often had a fun, stylized, and sometimes brutal spin on the sport. Games like NBA Jam, NHL Rock the Rink, and FIFA Street were staples of my younger years, and Melbourne's Danger Thumbs is tapping into this era with its appropriately named upcoming Aussie Rules game, Footy Bash. Woody Bash is an up to four player game made with pixel art visuals that see two teams of 10 battle it out for bragging rights. 
the twist. Players can bash one another as well as dash and take huge screamers. We played it at PAX Oz 2023 and it was fun and incredibly addictive. It's aiming to release near the start of the 2024 AFL season on PC and hopefully consoles. And I cannot wait. Although veering into the fantastical, Jeanette de Monet is a slumlord and a witch, highlights an incredibly real and contemporary issue. Renting is a hellscape and landlords are evil. The game centers on a gaggle of queers who must get out of their crappy rental and far away from their landlord Jeanette's invasive witchy powers. In this survival horror escape room scenario, I'm excited to see how Fuzzy Ghosts pull from their spooky funny inspirations, think Beetlejuice, and apply it to the central sentiment of housing as a human right. I'm particularly looking forward to seeing how these housemates can create home amongst themselves, despite all the mold. Macabre is the work of the Sydney-based WeForge Studio and is a co-op stealth extraction horror game that sees players explore an unstable time rift to uncover the cause of terrifying anomalies. To do so, your team will need to traverse infinite timelines and tackle interdimensional threats and other players, with every successful extraction yielding new equipment to further your progression. When times get tough, teams can choose to either stick together or individual players can try to save themselves and betray their teammates. WeForge aims to blend the terror of single player horror with a multiplayer setting. It's been developed in Unreal Engine 5 to help maximise the game's immersive atmosphere and it looks like it's on track to be a spooky and compelling time. Judging from the delay in its Kickstarter campaign launching, I very much doubt Spiritwell will release this year, but maybe through the power of listing it here it will help move it along. Spiritwell is an adventure RPG set in a magical world found at the bottom of a well. The character and animation designs are stunningly cute and detailed, with references to a bunch of well-loved franchises such as Ghibli and Zelda. To return home, your character engages in mini-games that will bring you closer to your forest friends and immerse you in their environments and everyday lives. Since playing a demo at PAX Oz 22, I have thought about returning to the forest often. Fingers crossed for more news on Spirit World this year. The opening minute of the trailer for Surf Club, the pastel-laden narrative adventure game from Melbourne-based indie developer Olivia Haynes, immediately sold me on what might be lurking beneath its aesthetic veneer. In it, we follow a young couple who are madly in love and planning a life together. But all of this is shown through the distorted lens of an aging VHS recording, the artifacting of the form lending the whole romantic display a warped and somewhat uneasy tone. So I guess it's no surprise then that Surf Club will follow Holly as she returns to her beach hometown half a decade after leaving it behind roaming the familiar streets in search of maybe another chance with her then partner, Beatty. It's a great premise, and the game's self-reported shorter length and ruminations on real-life inspired emotional journeys makes Surf Club really stand out in 2024. Alright, first up, I Will Bite Raw Coffee Beans is probably the best developer name I've seen in all my years writing about games. Absolutely hats off. But your holy and virtuous heretic looks sick, there's simply no way around it. With an art direction that looks like someone ran Kingsfield through a cursed emulator, the game follows ritualist Alistair in the 19th century as he is caught up in a demonic summoning. Through first person exploration and turn based combat, Alistair quests through some truly unhinged looking locations while recruiting even more unhinged looking demons to fight by his side. Unsurprisingly, I am all in on this one. So there you have it. While it's certainly not every cool Aussie game, it's a pretty good start for what looks to be another killer year for local talent. But did we miss your favourite upcoming title? What game are you keen to smash out with a lamington and an overpriced latte? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.